Now I'm going to talk to you about decrescendos. Hence the D, which is the opposite of the crescendo. So now we're going to go from loud to quiet. You can use the same thing with the head, how I talked about going out to the rim. So starting with a higher stick height, I'll play just the snare for you with that, like this. And then you can do full bars all the way around the kit, like this. And again, you can take like the last part of the fill and decrescendo it, or you can put it anywhere you want. You go through the whole encyclopedia with the decrescendo as well. So if I was to put it just at the tail end of a fill, it would sound like this. So now, with the example from the encyclopedia, I'm going to do just a shuffle groove for you, and it's three on the second tom, three on the floor tom, snare first tom. Now with that one, I like to lead with the left hand because you go three here and then leads on the floor tom with the left, and then you come back to the snare with the right so you're not doing the crossover thing. So the fill itself, without the decrescendo, is like this. Now, with the decrescendo, it's like this. Try to keep in mind too, when you come back to the beat with the crash, that you don't continue with your decrescendo and still play at that volume. It's kind of the, the element of the fill setting it up, bringing it down. But if you continue with such a low volume, you might not have much of a pocket left. So you want to make sure that you come back to the groove and have a nice crash and then a nice strong beat. So it'd be like this. Now I'm gonna do it with some music, just ad-lib some fills, and then you can see how the decrescendo can work very musically. Here we go. <laughs> 